Hi everyone, for this tutorial I'm going to show you how to install and use IceCube. IceCube can be downloaded from Lattice's website. If you go to www.latticesemi.com you can get to their website. Uh, first of all, just a brief overview of what IceCube is. IceCube is Lattice's IDE that they put out, their development environment, that allows you to build FPGAs and program them. Uh, the interesting thing about Lattice is that they have two F, uh, t tools that are both used to uh, synthesize and run through the whole de design process for FPGAs. One is called Lattice Diamond and the other is called IceCube 2. We're going to be using IceCube 2. Now the reason they actually have two, as I was told by my favorite Lattice rep, is that it was from when they purchased a company called Silicon Blue in the 2010-2011 time frame and that's where the ICE family of FPGAs comes from. Uh, originally there was plans when they purchased the company to merge Diamond and Ice Cube together but based on what my rep told me it's, it was more complicated than they initially thought and so the plans for merging the two were scrapped. So now we have two IDEs for better or for worse, um, I, I kind of like Ice Cube because it is very simple, which is one of the reasons that I chose to design the Go board with an Ice FPGA. If you're getting learning and you're trying to open up the Vivado or Quartus type of uh, an IDE, which are put out by Xilinx and Altera respectively, you will be very overwhelmed. There are just entirely too many things to click on, too many places to get lost. So Ice Cube 2 is very simple, very bare bones. It allows you to do what you need to do, and it doesn't confuse you with extra stuff. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the software. It's available for both Linux and for Windows. I'm using a Windows computer, so I will download it with, for Windows. And immediately, oh, you need to sign in. That's unfortunate. You do need to create a Lattice account to download their tools and to uh, request a license to use their tools as well. So Go ahead and do that. There's a few fields to fill in here. Um, don't just put in garbage, put in real stuff. You're going to need to remember your email address, your password, um, and they are going to be emailing you the license when the tool is downloaded. So once you get your tool completely installed, uh, download it, then install it, and you're going to want to uh, request a license actually. Let's do that first. So the way to do that uh, is go back to products, Ice Cube 2, and there is a section here that says license. There it is, licensing. Uh, the license is free, which is nice. So click on the link here. Uh, you do need to be logged in. And when you do log in, it's going to prompt you for uh, your Mac address for your computer. So if you don't know how to get that, the easiest thing to do is hit the Windows key, then R to bring up the run dialog. Type in CMD, brings up a command prompt. Type in IPCONFIG, IPConfig space forward slash ALL. And that will show you IP related information. And the one you're looking for is Ethernet adapter, local area connection, something like that physical address right here this hex code is what you're looking for so if you easiest way to get this you can type it in manually or you can right click on it click this mark highlight it with your left mouse button and then if you click on it again it's going to go away the highlighting but if you just hit enter on your keyboard it will copy those numbers into your uh, clipboard so you can paste it somewhere where, where when it, on the next page once you're logged in it'll show you where to paste it so we're done with this. You have your Mac. You have your uh, Mac address. Uh, the tool, I believe, will prompt you for the for the license. But if it doesn't, just uh, navigate to where you installed your Ice Cube 2, Ice Cube 2, 2, uh, that directory. And here, there's a file uh, called License Setup. You can double-click that, and you can browse for your the file you're looking for is license.dat which gets emailed to you once you have signed up for your account and requested the license. So now that you have the tool installed, you have the license successfully set up, you're ready to dive in and use the tool.
Let's get rid of this. Here's what it looks like. Not super fancy, which I like. It's bare bones. It's not a million help buttons and tool tips and updates. It's just an FPGA IDE that allows you to build your FPGA. That's all it does. It doesn't do anything really complicated. So first thing, I'll just give you a quick overview of what the tools got inside of it. When I mean, look at these menus, they are small. Look it up. Look up like a tool menu for Bovado, and you'll just it'll blow your mind. Here we go. Um, so let's see. Let's let's first of all create a new project. All right. So the project that we are creating. Uh, you do need to know some information about the FPGA that you're targeting. So I'll call this test project. Uh, for the Go board, for the nanland.com Go board, uh, that is an ICE 40 FPGA. It's an HX1K VQ100 package. These are 3.3. So you do need to know some of these things. So you need to know your family, your, your device, and your package. Uh, what temperature? that your FPGA is rated towards, commercial or industrial. Uh, voltage tolerance, 2 to 5%. Uh, 1.2 volt core, that's right. My I.O. bank for all of my banks on the Go board is 3.3 volts. So you do want to set those there. And we're going to be starting from synthesis. That's what we want. So we can do next. And it'll ask you if you want to add files. For now, I think I can just say, I don't want to. Okay, so this is it. Now down here it shows you, you picked out an ICE-40, an HX-1K, VQ-100, it shows you what you chose. You can edit this and change your parameters, so if you mess something up you can change it after the fact. I did that by right clicking on this and going to edit. But everything is accessible right, right here. So, um, let's see, what's the very first thing? The very first thing you're probably going to want to do um, is just maybe give yourself a little familiar with the tools uh, of what's, what's possible. Um, I'll just show you the, the things that are built into this tool. There's a timing constraints editor. Timing constraints tell your FPGA uh, where to focus its energy, what, what speed is it running at. So um, most of this, so for the Go board, I will provide you a timing constraints file so you don't even need to worry about this at all. Pin constraints editor. This tells you how to map your signal uh, on the, on your design. So, like, you know, LED one. Where what pin does that get mapped to? You can. There's an editor built in that maybe makes it a little bit simpler. You don't need to use either of these two things. Floor planner. You're never going to be using because that you the FPGA board is designed. Package view. Power estimator. Guess what? You don't need to use any of these things with the Nanland Go board. You don't even need to bother. If you want to click into them and figure out what they do, go for it. But you do not need them. So that's nice. So really, all you're going to want to do is deal with just just some text files, basically. So um, there's maybe I'll just quickly go over the, the flow process here. So the flow for building an FPGA is first the tool. Uh, first, you add your design files. Let's do that. Let's add some files. Uh, so you're going to navigate to the uh, LED, the, sorry, the whatever VHDL or Verilog code you want to add to your to your project. And here's one thing that got me for a while. I kept clicking on the file and then clicking OK. Um, there's this fun little extra step where you have to actually tell it, no, add the file like that. Click this button over here, and then it shows up over here, and th that's what's going to be added. So then if you expand this design files, ah, I got LED blink.vhd. So that's that's in there now. You can also add some synthesis constraints if you would like, if you need to. And then when you're done, you can run synthesis. And my license is going to expire soon. I need a new one. So um, synthesis is one step of an FPGA process. Uh, what happens during synthesis is that it takes your RTL code which is your VHDL code that looks like, you know, this is VHDL. It can do Verilog as well. Um, but it takes it and it parses it and it turns it into, uh, F it turns it into registers and lookup tables that your FPGA 
is able to use to, uh, that actually has it. So the synthesis tool knows which FPGA you're using and how to appropriately uh, map your code into elements that are actually on the FPGA. So in this particular case, it shows you it shows you a ton of information. The output of this is very very large, even for something as simple as blinking four LEDs, which is this is all the code is right here. And you have this huge text file that gives you a lot of information. And if you've never looked through a synthesis report before, I definitely recommend you you take a look at it. Um, it's good information, a lot of good information in here, and you it might be a little lost at first, but it is interesting to take a look at. But um, let's see, the, probably the, the main thing you want to check is to see how many register bits you've used. So I've used 7% of my available bits, register bits, um, with this particular design. And it, it, it outputs some files. Now, synthesis is done, but you're not done with your entire FPGA flow. You also need to uh, go through place and route. So that's what PNR stands for. Place and route, what that does is it takes your synthesis design which you can think of as just a bunch of a bunch of elements in your FPGA that are just spread out flat on a table and place and route actually puts them onto your FPGA and makes sure that the FPGA meets timing and when I say timing what I actually mean is that um, all of the elements all of the signals are able to propagate from one part of your FPGA to another part of your FPGA um, before a clock cycle is up. So you do need to tell your FPGA, you do need to tell place and route rather, uh, about what speed it's operating at. So that's a place and route constraint file. That's That can be added in here. You, the same way you add it in your design files. You right click on constraint files and you add that in here. So let's see, do I have any, I don't have any available right now, but that's where they go. Once that's done, you can um, run. You can basically run to uh, if you go to tool run all, I believe that will work. Or you can just do run bitmap. Ultimately, bitmap is what you want. Um, you can run intermediate steps, import placer, router, bitmap. But bitmap is the final output, and that's what the programmer tool uses to program your FPGA. So there you have it. That's the whole flow of building a bitmap in IceCube 2. That's what you want to do. So again, install IceCube 2, get the license. In, uh, once you have the license set up, you add your design files into the synthesis area. You add your constraint files for place and route. I will be providing your constraint files to you for the NANLAND Go board. And then you click you double click on uh, generate bitmap and you're good to go. It will run through the synthesis, which, which it did here. It'll run through place and route and it'll give you a bitmap file that you can use to program your FPGA. Uh, in a future video, I'll be showing exactly this whole flow and getting the Go board up and running and making it blink and blink some LEDs and do a whole lot more. I just, for this video, I just wanted to give a brief overview of IceCube 2 and how to install it. So thanks very much for watching.